Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, Director of the Foil Design Institute, and today I'm here to share with you a fabulous design, bulb flowers in a landscape style, and the flowers, a breath of springtime, all of them from Sun Valley Farms, through careful planning, planting practices, and really a lot of scientific knowledge, they allow us to have springtime blooms virtually year-round. Although this explosion of color is so fabulous, this isn't what you want to purchase. When you contact them and you buy your Sun Valley flowers, you want them to be like this, all tight, hardly even able to see the bloom. And you want to process them yourself. So they're going to ship them into you and they're going to be tightly closed, just like this. You want to cut them, give them a fresh cut on the bottom, and put them in water with flower food. And yes, there is flower food specifically for bulb flowers. Your tulips, leave them in the sleeve. Don't even take them out. That'll help them hydrate and stay straight so they'll be beautiful to work with. Just cut the stem, set them down in the water, and let them drink for several hours before you start designing. Hyacinths are unique. They are long lasting and the folks at Sun Valley have studied how to keep them alive the absolute longest. And one thing they discovered is if you can leave them attached to a portion of the bulb, they'll last so much longer. So when they harvest them, they pull them up, bulb and all, and then they core out the very end so that you get a portion of the bulb still on there. Now you don't want to cut that off. You know, it might be your thinking that you just cut these all and get rid of that. No, it will shorten the life of your flower. If anything, just scrape the bottom eighth of an inch or so off and then set them right in. You don't have to cut off hardly anything because the nutrients are in that bulb and that's what's going to keep the bloom happy and let it open up so fully. My container, just a simple square, lined with plastic, and then inside I've used two anchor pins, and I've secured them to the plastic using just a little bit of U-glue, one single strip, down in the base, two anchor pins, and I can just take my foam and set it right in, and it'll be sturdy and secure, and I don't have to tape it in place. Bulb flowers will do perfectly fine in foam as long as there's a great water reservoir. You want to make sure that the foam stays fully saturated. This container is perfect because I have so much room around the edges. An added bonus, I can take my hyacinths and attach them to the side of the foam, never actually even inserting it in, just kind of setting it beside, then using an 18 gauge wire that I've taped with floral tape so it won't cut into it, bending it into a U, and then securing that right into the foam. Then, as I finish everything, I can fill this with water. They're gonna drink fabulously. So I don't even need to cut that basil plate off. The basil plate can stay right the way it is. It will continue to drink and support this flower. And I've got it anchored into the foam. So I just pierce it straight down in there. Now I don't pierce into the stem. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just taking my flower, setting it next to the foam, and then anchoring it in place with a wire that I spear into the foam, but around the bloom. If I want one on this opposite side, again, just taking another wire, setting it on the side over here, and then pinning it right into place. Sun Valley hyacinths are grown so long and so strong, in some designs they're just too big to even set in. In that case, hydrate them totally, not removing the basal plate, but then later, after they've been hydrated, preferably overnight. Once you go to design, you can cut them down, but if you've worked with them before, you know sometimes it can be a little hard to get the cut stem to go into the foam. The trick with that is to give it a cut, 
then take a wood pick, wrap it around the base, and use that to spear your way into the foam, placing the stem down in with the wood pick as well. Next come the tulips. And they're so strong and sturdy. You can just take them and set them straight down into the foam, angling them a bit. Now tulips are going to continue to grow. They will actually grow the full length of their head every single day. So you want to think about that as you design and put some of them a little lower, knowing that maybe it's almost too short, but knowing they're going to continue to grow. They grow against gravity, and they grow to the light. They're a very, very wonderful bloom because it becomes almost interactive. And if you can tell that story to the customer, let them know that, did you know your tulips are going to continue to grow? They'll truly love it. They'll get so excited just watching to see what they do, how long they get. Iris are amazing bulb flowers. They're so stately, so strong, so elegant. Placing them in nice and straight up through the center. You can see they're just beady little things right now. These buds are so tight, but they're guaranteed to open. Look how gorgeous they are, open, full, and fabulous. Again, it makes it an interactive design for the customer because they get to watch them open. They get to experience the joy of seeing these little things come to life, bloom, so to speak. In addition to the fabulous bulb flowers, Sun Valley has foliages as well. The deciduous huckleberry gives you a backbone of green to work with. So grand. Salal with the nice leathery leaves. And bear grass. Look at this, how long and drapey and green. Absolutely stunning. I'm going to use the deciduous huckleberry to create a support system. You know, that sounds kind of weird, support system. But I want to give it a little bit of visual as well as actual support for my hyacinths so that as they continue to grow this foliage will help keep it standing upright because it's surprisingly strong. Each of these branches has a very strong backbone that I can use to support and it helps to hold everything in place so that as it grows it'll still be beautiful and they won't flop around and get out of control. You can see it adds a lot of movement to this side of the design. Then maybe for the tulips, coming in with a bit of the salal. Again, visual weight. That green is so fabulous. Tucking it down in, helping to cover some of the mechanics. Then here in the Pacific Northwest, we have a lot of moss, and springtime is moss time. And I thought I couldn't do a spring bulb arrangement without incorporating a little bit of moss. So I have just a beautiful touch of sphagnum moss. This actually came from Teacher Beth's house. So Teacher Beth, if you're watching this, yes, this is your moss. Well, not from your house, but you gathered this for us and brought it in making sure it's not going to end up in the water reservoir, keeping it on the foam because I don't want it to leach into the water because then it would leak over the side. But you can see how quickly that fills in. Then a magical nest to fill into the center accent area and to make it a little more organic, taking some of the bear grass, cutting it down, and then weaving it into the nest and wrapping, 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 and then knotting it on itself, just kind of tying it. doesn't have to be real organized. It can be fairly loose, coming loose more. There we go, tying it. Then taking another piece, pulling it around, gathering again, locking it in there, tying it into a knot. And it's so long and flexible. You can just knot it as many times as you need to to get it to stay into place. 
and then taking it with the ends of the bare grass, inserting that straight down into the foam and setting it into place. To finish the design, I just can't send out an empty nest. So I want to bring something in there. And I have so much lovely pink, I want to bring some pink down. Best would be to use a little bit of hyacinth. They bead wonderfully. So I just go ahead and cut them off of the stem. So I've let them open out, and then I remove them from the stem. This one I'd actually broken, so it's a perfect one to use, so it doesn't get wasted. Pulling it down. Once you have a cluster of them, using just a little bit of aluminum wire, also in the pink, don't need very much. I start by just threading them on. At the end, give it a little tiny bend and thread it up over that bend. That way it won't come back out. Then continuing on, overlapping them. Feeding them down. And you may be wondering, but my goodness, how long will that last? There's no water source. They'll last surprisingly well. This is one I did yesterday and left it just sitting out at room temperature. And yes, it started to fade, but it's still beautiful and it's still incredibly fragrant. So you can actually do these up ahead of time. Now I did another one that I left in the flower cooler. It looked absolutely spectacular, hadn't faded at all. So you could make these up, leave them in the cooler, and then turn around and sell them. Once you have it, give it a little bend so it matches the bend of the nest, and then feed the end straight down into the foam. So you bring that pink in. Then if you want a little bit of pussy willow, just a tiny bit, give it a cut and letting it come up with the hyacinths. Again, it will help support them as they grow so that they don't fall to the side and adds just a little more springtime to the bouquet. The arrangement is finished and it's beautiful but it's a little bit skimpy because the flowers haven't bloomed out. But that's what's so grand about bulbs, is they evolve, they grow, they expand, they bloom. So the recipient gets to go through the whole process with them. This design, similar, not identical, but using many of the same flowers I did two days ago. So you can see how much it was going to change. The iris buds, to full open. The hyacinths nice and tight. Look how they've grown and softened their movement. The line is moving around. Tulips, more hyacinths. It's just exploding with color and fragrance. That's the beauty of bulb flowers. You make them up and they're long lasting and they're beautiful, but then they evolve. It becomes an interactive design and it ends up like this, even more beautiful. So now it's your turn. You have the knowledge. You know that your hyacinths you need to leave on that basil plate. You know your tulips you need to leave sleeved. You know the iris should be little, little tiny buds. Now that you know and you can create, get out there. Buy some bulbs and create away. Have fun. If you've got questions, if you need help finding them, don't hesitate to contact me. You can reach us through the website at flowerschool.com or by telephone at 1-800-819-8089. And as you get your beautiful bulb arrangement made, send me a picture. Use my personal email. It's Leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. Thanks to Sun Valley for providing so many wonderful blossoms. I had fun pretending it's springtime here in Portland on a snow day. Have fun and do something you love.